Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. Fantastic to have you here. We're here with Mike from TA Outdoors. Make sure you guys check him out. Another little five second rundown. So basically I make uh, bushcraft survival type videos and general outdoor adventure videos so I can head out into the woods, teach a couple of skills, enjoy, enjoy it really. Absolutely. If you like the outdoors, and you probably do, go check out his channel. But first of all, today, because he's into bushcrafting, we're gonna make a bushcraft knife. I'm gonna teach him how to do it. Thank you for joining me and I hope you enjoy. First thing's first, we've got to cut some steel. And into the forge we go. Right, so we forged out his piece of O1 tool steel. Again, it's about 1% carbon. Nice high carbon steel for this blade. I also forged out this little hunk of mild steel here that I'm gonna be able to use to kind of demonstrate what it is that we're gonna be doing forging process wise. But to know what we're doing forging process wise, we probably have to have an idea of what is the knife that we're making. So it's time to have a little bit of a think about that. So what are some of the knives that you, uh, that you have over here, the, the knives you have already? So this is the typical bushcraft knives that I use. Usually about four to four and a half inch blade. Again, four or four and a half inch handle. Generally a bushcraft knife will have a, a drop point on it and that's for when you're carving and carving wood and you can get a little bit more intricate when you're doing carving. Uh, about a four mil thickness on it. Uh, that's because I like battening a lot with another stick just to bash it so I, I like that thickness as well. And again, Scandinavian grind is just a typical thing that you get with bushcraft knives. Okay, so it's, it's really, really thick a really long way down the blade. This is something I was really surprised about when I saw these, is just how little of the blade actually has a grind to it. It's only ground there in the last like three eighths of an inch. And am I right in thinking Scandi grind is just one straight bevel straight to the edge? Yeah. No secondary bevel at all? No, it's okay. straight to the edge. And when people sharpen it, you generally will get a micro bevel. Okay, But okay. That's, that's fine, you can deal with that, we can deal with that. Okay, so it's just a very, very slight kind of, you know, apple seed right at the exactly. edge or something like yeah. that. Okay, so basically what we're looking for is a super, super strong knife, drop point, that kind of thing. In terms of the end of the handle, how do you like that design? Uh, I prefer the, the end of the handle on this one, actually. Yep. It's just a more ergonomic grip for me. Okay. Uh, but again, you can see they're both curling down anyway towards the end. Okay. Just to give you that support. Great. So what I reckon we might as well do is... We'll uh, sketch ourselves up the design, your ideal design of a knife so that we can forge to it and grind to it. I'm no artist, Alec. That's all right. You know. Neither am I. Here is the knife that we're gonna be making. It has a four and a half inch blade, four and three quarter inch handle. We just gotta take this and put it into steel. Easy enough, right? Yeah. yeah. Great, let's do it, into the fire. Oakley doakley, so I'm gonna do a little bit of a demo a Rooney here. This is your flat stock, this is my mild steel piece, but yours looks similar. First thing, lift up about a 20 degree angle, tilt your hammer over about a 65, and work on just the point. So we're trying to simply forge a point, and it's gonna end up like in the middle of the bar. So really, really focus on keeping the angle of your left hand consistent and tilt your hammer over to what feels like an extreme angle. Make sure that we keep that sucker nice and hot. The back of the forge we go. So we're gonna keep bringing that point down and we wanna keep it parallel on the sides though, right? So if it swells out, check it back and keep bringing that point down. Then we can have a look at our drawing there and you see the taper we have is rather obtuse. It needs to be a little bit more acute. And so we can bring that angle down and in fact roll it over into that kind of traditional drop point shape like so. There we go. That is going to be the first step. It is now your turn. So here is going to be the next step. We're going to be wanting to bring this to a little bit proud of the final width of our blade. We also want to make sure it's flat and square and neat. So take your hammer 
I'm gently playing across. Now, the trick is you don't want to do too much at a time because you want to be able to look at your work, observe it, and see if you need to change and tweak anything in your next set of hammer blows to better achieve what you're looking for. Clean your surfaces. Since we're now close to dimension, we want to be uh, careful about our surface finish. But basically, next step is clean up your sides, sure. make it even, make it the right width. To make that easier is we can go ahead and like take this, and if we go a few millimeters wider, you can then use this to then tell yourself if you're in the right width. So now what we need to do is you're going to need to work out where on the blade we need to make that choil. We can measure it when it comes to yours. You're going to come to this small side of the horn here, flat side of the hammer on top. You're going to hammer down onto it and use the form of the horn to form that choil, right? Then we're going to mark where our next groove is and it's a slightly larger diameter. So we'll now come in over here and we can use the horn like that. But what we're going to start doing is we're going to start dipping into that nice little swell we want. So with that mark, we can then take the round side of the hammer and use the round side of the hammer to form it. We're starting to approach the design of that particular knife in terms of the lengths of each section. The widths on yours are going to be a little bit closer, but you see we're pretty much there. So that's all it takes. You're going to be all sorted. So Mike's blade, he has now forged it out. You can take it out of the fire now. And what we're gonna do is now over lunch, we're gonna run some normalizing cycles. That's a little hot for the first one. We're gonna run some normalizing cycles, heating it up to a red, letting it air cool. What that does is that is going to, oh! Now, wouldn't you know, somebody has made a pretty damn interesting video about heat treatment. Awesome in-depth. You guys remember I did a real engineering collaboration just a few weeks ago. There was a truck behind me. Well, real engineering has just uploaded his side of the collaboration. His video is insane. I'm going to link it below. Make sure you go check it out. But anyway, we're going to run some normalizing cycles on this. And then we're going to be going into the grinding room. And you're going to be grinding your piece, starting to get this thing all, uh, all pretty and ready for heat treatment. All right, we've done three normalizing cycles. Now time for us to suit up and hit the grinding room. Let's Let's go! Right, so we're gonna go right over here. First things first, we're gonna take a hard disc on an angle grinder. And we are going to remove off all the scales. We'll take vice grips, clamp them down. Then, you can turn it around, and you can do the same thing here.
So now, I want you to get the profile exactly how you want it. You can do everything but that. We don't have any wheels to hit that on this. We'll put an attachment on. For now, get all the other profiles exactly how you want it. Keep this parallel. Get your drop point how you want it. Get this handle shape how you want it. You can come up here. You can come right there. You can come like this to get that, uh, that shape of the handle. We'll bring the drawing in so that you can get this to really nicely match it. He's done a fantastic job of grinding it. I was getting the stuff flat, just so it's flat, you know, it means that we get something a little bit better to work with. When I say flat, I mean like, kind of flat. A belt grinder like that isn't amazing for getting things flat. <sighs> You know, when like I'm grinding that, trying to grind it flat and I know I can't get it perfectly flat, and then I look up and I see this thing. Soon I will have a wheel for it. And you guys are gonna see a video of me kind of getting this thing set up and using it for the first time. Can't use it yet. So I was getting things roughly flat. And Mike, you kind of directed your own kind of profile grinding there, working out the profiles you wanted. He changed a couple of things from the forging. Yeah, I had the I had a bit of a bit more of a bulge there in the handle yep. originally. You know, yeah, yeah. We also handle. cut this a lot shorter mm. than it was. It was, a, it was a hell of a lot longer. Cut that nice angle on it, and so it's a cool shape. And uh, and the great thing is, is, you know, he's kind of made this thing fit his hand, fit the feel that he wants. An important thing here was making sure, of course, we remember to keep this choil area proud because one of the things we talked about when we were designing it is he really likes having that handle come all the way down to that choil there halfway before it is that we do our grind. Speaking about our grind, we are gonna rough grind it right now before our heat treat. So I'm gonna take this. This is blue dicum. Um, now, of course, everybody knows I love blue dicum. It's like my favorite color in the world. Just so beautiful. But what is it? I know, I, I often don't explain it. Some people are new to this. I didn't know what blue dicum was in the past. It's a dye that you'll paint onto the material um, and it'll dry in a relatively short amount of time. And when it's dry, you're able to scratch it and it doesn't flake away. So you're able to get a very fine scratch line with a scribe which you can use for pretty, pretty, pretty accurate laying out. Working to the scribe line, it's a really, really good way of uh, doing things, especially like this. But well, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take this height gauge and we're gonna take this granite plate. We're gonna turn this sideways, set the height gauge, work out the thickness of the material. We're gonna set the height of the material, 4.48 millimeters. We're gonna drop it down and we're gonna go to two, not exactly half, I don't want it exactly half because I'm gonna do one scribe across here. That sets a scribe line, it's slightly off center. I'll flip it over. This does have a slight taper to it anyway. We'll do our next scribe line. So what that does is that gives us two scribe lines and it gives us a gap. It's a very small little gap. That means that we grind to the scribe lines and we're still kind of pretty much thick enough to be able to heat treat this thing without too much damage. We'll go a little thicker than that before heat treat, but it's a really nice way to set our center for the edge because like something that's really, really important for a very good blade is making sure that that edge is straight along the whole way. Then you can sharpen it a lot easier and in use, it's just a hell of a lot more predictable when you're cutting stuff and these are all things that I've slowly been learning, so I'm very pleased to pass these on to you and to Mike. Ah, would you look at that? He's done a fabulous job of those bevels. How do you enjoy that, Mike? Oh, I loved it. Very good. Actually, a lot harder than it looks as well. What do you find more difficult, the grinding or the forging? Oh, grinding. By yep. far, I'd say, yeah, grinding. See, that has been one of the most difficult things for me to learn. Like, I only got into knife making about like, a year ago, and obviously, you know, making YouTube videos is kind of difficult to, like, I, I think the best way to practice things is to just, like, do them over and over and over and over again. And so I haven't been able to quite do that, but I've been able to do enough of them where I've really shocked myself with how much I've improved, which, in the grand scheme of things, is not a whole lot, but it is a tough, 
tough skill. And so you did a great job there. I did kind of the last little cleanup there. And again, this is this interesting Scandinavian grind. It's a very shallow grind, which is kind of uh, weird for me to get used to looking at and, and, and kind of like, you know, recommending how we go about it. But of course, we still are, oh, about 50 thou thick here on the edge. So we have super, super good amounts of, uh, of material to work with once it's heat treated. Right, so the blue dichrome is now kind of drying. We want our handle scales to come all the way up to like here, right? Yeah, nice and close to the choil. Perfect. So we now need to work out where we're going to put six holes. We're going to need six, you know, we need two holes yeah. in the middle here. We need two holes on the end, two holes up here. On the end there, I always kind of like uh, following the angle here on the butt. So what I think we should do is we take these beat up calipers. And if we scribe along here, and if we come in like this, I reckon that gives us a pretty decent place for our first two holes. If I make a mark following that choil there, I don't know if it's going to be quite as nice. It would mean that we'd have like one there. Yeah. And one there, maybe? Actually, maybe that is good. Take this bad boy here. Give that a mark. Give that a mark. I'm gonna line that bad boy up right there in the middle. Give it a scribe across there. Scribe across here. And then I'm gonna put a square on it. I'll simply take it 90 degrees to there. You know, roughly, we don't have an amazing reference for it, but. And so now, here, 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 and number six right there. We can now center punch on these scribe lines. You see, when we center punch it, we don't want to center punch too deeply, though, because when you center punch really, really hard, you end up work hardening the material. This is 01, you know, it's tough steel already. It's going to work harden very easily. So we do a gentle center punch, just enough that when you come over here and we use this mill, we'll be able to find the hole here with our drill. Go straight down, straight over the center punch mark. Nice and easy. I will hand this to you for center punching. So I was just demonstrating to him how to use the mill, how to, you know, how we can drill the hole. I set it up. I'm like, well, I'll just drill one hole, you know, and then <laughs> this is the noise it makes. Yeah, it doesn't make any noise because if it was to cut, well, okay, well, it made it, well, it made a squeaking noise last time I tried, but it didn't make any noise and it's done absolutely nothing to the steel. Obviously, 01 is like an extremely hard steel. We did a number of normalizing cycles. Clearly, that tang wants a little more than a normalizing cycle. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat up the forge and I was really hoping that we're going to be doing the heat treat uh, right now. However, it looks like indeed we have to anneal the tang. So I'm going to heat up the forge and I'm going to shove it into like here and we're going to anneal the tang. And it's late in the evening. So ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be continuing on with this in tomorrow's episode. Make sure that you go subscribe to TA Outdoors and I'll give them another little rundown. Like tell them why, why should they go subscribe? Because they should. Uh, general sort of outdoor adventure videos with a focus on bushcraft, survival, outdoor kind of wilderness skills. Brilliant. Go subscribe. His link is down below, TAA Outdoors. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure having you here. This thing's going to be finished tomorrow, and I'm super excited because then this is yours to keep forever. He's been doing fabulous work on it. He's going to be able to use it in his videos. That's why you should subscribe. So I'm looking forward to seeing how he enjoys this. Thank you, guys. Make sure you go subscribe to him. It's been a pleasure. I'll see you tomorrow.